So just about a few months ago, I started working on a free multiplayer horror game for Steam. And if you're new here, it's basically a social deduction game where one of the players is secretly infected. And to stay hidden, the infected can do this little sneaky thing where they disguise themselves as a survivor. Now, I would say the game has come a long way, but it's far from finished. Like, it doesn't even have sound effects. But as I was thinking about all the cool things that I could add, one idea stood out that could either make or break the game. And that feature is proximity chat. <laughs> Every game would be better with proximity chat, right? Well, maybe not mine. You'll see what I'm talking about later, but for right now, there is something very important that I have to take care of. The game runs like shit. Check this out, if you look in this direction, everything's fine, but once you turn around, everything loads in, and your frame rate plummets by 100 frames. Now look, my PC isn't exactly a potato with all of its like hardware and stuff, so you can imagine that people playing this on their Apple Eye table would not enjoy the experience very much. Bad performance equals bad game, and bad game equals no money, and no money equals no house, and no house equals homeless. So pretty much, if I don't fix this, I'll be homeless. But there's hope. First, there are way too many lights, and too many lights makes the game run like a man in a wheelchair. Not very good. So I went around the map and started shutting off a bunch of the lights. Then, I added occlusion culling which basically stops rendering anything Thing the player can't see. And lastly, I decreased the clipping planes on the camera so only a fraction of the distance is being rendered. Damn, without all those Indian tutorial videos, I would literally be homeless. Thank you so much. And so with that done, the next obvious thing would be to work on the proximity chat, right? But what if I told you that I accidentally remade the entire outside portion of the map? No joke. I relocated all the houses, added new walls, some shipping containers, a chain link fence, a scary tree, another scary tree, a long path that goes around the map, and then I wasted an hour making a jeep that I decided I didn't even like enough to put into the game anyways. Bruh. But even though it was a bit random for me to do all that unprepared, I should say I'm happy with how it turned out. I even added a couple of watchtowers with ladders. I mean, it's kind of scuffed going down, but hey, we don't need to go back down. The view is nice enough up here, you know what I mean? <laughs> I swear to god, these ladders better not be as glitchy as the battle class ones. I will work 12 hour days to have that not happen. You better. The biggest addition to the map is not the awesome watchtowers with their super gate ladders, but it's these two helipads on each side of the map. In case you're curious, the helipads are for those things that fly, they have like the, uh, the spinny thing on top of them. Whatever, you'll see more about that later. Now it's time for the moment we have all been waiting for. Remaking the map all over again. Just kidding. The proximity chat. But proximity chat is no easy task. You might take it for granted in popular games like Lethal what? Company. But behind the scenes, it's, well, um, I don't know. And so I really tried to understand how it works, but I have no idea. And hey, I'm kind of running out of time because I have to upload the pay to rent. Oh shit, is that the landlord? A stroke was imminent with the blood supply slowly cutting off to my brain, but just in time, I found it. An absolute godsend. Simple drag and drop setup. Works with any network system. And that's exactly what I needed, but the only problem was that it cost 100 George Washingtons. Please subscribe, please subscribe, please subscribe. And so there it was. Proximity chat in all of its beauty. Hey, look, you want this medication pack? Yeah, I want the medication pack. Alright, pick it up, man. Pick it up. You wanna die? Pick it up. Oh, oh, what? After dragging and dropping the proximity chat into the game, I was completely drained from all the hard work, so I went to sleep. Not in my bed, but right here in my chair. So that way, as soon as I wake up, I don't waste any time getting out of bed, and I can get right back to game development. But as soon as I woke up, I realized there is a big oopsie with the proximity chat. And that's why earlier I said it could break the game. So the problem is, the game has an ability where the infected player can swap players' names to confuse everyone. Oh. Yeah, yeah, your uh, username says my name. But now that the game has proximity chat, you can kind of easily tell who's who by their voice. So I tried to fix this, keyword tried, by swapping their voices along with their names. And I also tried to add a little voice filter so you can't tell who's who. But, I mean, I was kind of barely able to drag and drop a few scripts into the game to get it working in the first place. So you can imagine it didn't work. So let me know in the comments if you think I should just change it to regular voice chat or if I should just leave it how it is. I said the hell with my problems for now and decided to make something new, a walkie talkie. These would, well, obviously enable long distance communication and they would be spawned randomly throughout the map each game. So I made a walkie talkie, but before I could actually make it like work and stuff, there was something I had been itching to do first. Alright, we're good. Nah, I had to remake the in-game arms because currently, our boy's hands look like he's from GTA San Andreas. Who glued your fingers together, bro? What the hell? 
so I gave Blender a good old boot up and after a while the new and improved arms were finished. And the biggest difference is that these arms have actual fingers. Oh boy, just imagine the emotes I could make with that. But also, I have to say, don't worry, he may have fingers, but he does not have toes. That would be terrifying. But seriously, the new arms look way better than the old ones. After that blender session, I put the new arms in the game, and then my heart sank. This is the moment I realized I had to remake all of the animations. I love making video games. I love making video games. I love making video games. I love making videos. I love making videos. I love Enough with the whining, I did what I had to do. And then after that, I finished a walkie talkie from earlier. And so here's what it looks like in the game. It doesn't have that static sound that you'd expect from a regular walkie talkie, but I do plan to add that in the future. Alright, boys, girls, and user specified, listen up, because this is going to be a big change that will affect the entire game. Back when I first started working on the game, I made a crafting system, but after some playtesting, I realized it's quite useless since no one ever used it. You know, useless. Plus, there were just way too many ingredients to animate, and it was getting very messy. I knew it needed a replacement. So what is going to replace the crafting system? Drum roll, please. Bread. Let me explain. I modeled some cash, and then I made the money randomly spawn around the map. I know, right? I'm clever. I said bread. I also made the task reward you with a bit of cash upon completion. Now the players can stack up their cash, but what can you even do with it? Introducing the crafting system's replacement. The buy station. After creating the new system, here's what it looks like in-game. You walk up, and then some UI appears. You can then spend your hard-earned cash on all of the things that you could have previously crafted, and even some new upgrades. I didn't add every item yet, so it is a bit bare bones, but here's the best part of the new buy station. Each game, two random items will go on sale at a random discount. So now each game you'll have to hope to get the best sale possible, like for example 50% off walkie talkie, and so I'm thinking that sort of randomness will hopefully make the game more replayable. Let me know what you think about the new buy station. Good? Bad? But now, let's do some gambling. You'll see what I mean. After removing crafting, I was pretty much forced to change how the gambling works in the game. And so as some context, before, you would gamble the item that was in your hand in the hopes that the vending machine would give you a better item. But since I just removed the crafting, and with that, all of the ingredients, the system didn't really make any sense anymore and it needed to change. And with that, I wanted the gambling system to use money. So the goal was to have the player to be able to spend more money for a bigger possible reward. For that, I made a ticket based mechanic where the player can choose the rarity of their ticket between common, uncommon, and rare. All for an increasing price. And yeah, to be clear, this is the in-game money, not real money. I just thought I'd clarify that. By the way, it's also now possible for the machine to give you nothing, which will add more risk to gambling. So yes kids. Don't gamble. Or, well, you can't, but still, don't gamble. One of the most boring parts of the game right now is honestly the tasks. There's too many boring tasks like finding research notes and replacing fuses. But I was struggling to come up with some more task ideas, so in the last video I asked people to suggest some fun task ideas to add to the game. And with that, one suggestion caught my eye. Add a task where you do target practice with a temporary gun that does no damage to the other players. I don't know how I didn't think of this earlier because there's literally an entire shooting range in the game. But after quickly making the task, this is how it works. When the player walks up, the targets start to move from side to side, and the player gets equipped with a gun that could only damage the targets. And once you've hit 7 targets directly in the center, so where the red dot is, the task is complete. This idea started as a comment and turned into the best task in the game. Gracias, my dude. Speaking of the comments, one with over 100 likes suggested that when the infected completes a task, time should instead add to the countdown instead of being removed. And so if you don't know, the game time would reduce even when the infected completed a task. But now, after seeing the comment, I change it to where the time is instead added to the countdown when the infected completes a task. And so this could potentially make it really obvious who the infected player is, but it'll need some playtesting. Alrighty right, remember those helipads from earlier? What are they for? Well, the old way to win the game was to escape through these so-called gates. However, let's be real, that is damn boring. Now instead, when the timer reaches zero, two helicopters will swoop down to your rescue. <laughs> yeah, about the helicopters. They're just prototypes, I promise. And as for what happens when you escape through the helicopter, well, the game just tells you that you escaped, and then you can freely roam around the map. Maybe someday I can make one of those epic fly-off cutscenes, but yeah, that's not like super easy, so maybe yeah, in the future. The date was August 3rd, 2024. Nah, I don't know the exact date, but it was a few weeks ago. I was playing the game with about 8 people from the Discord server. And everything was going fine, until I walked up to the camera system in the security room. What happens next is heartbreaking. The frame drop was so real that my computer sh** the bed with the blue screen of death. Embarrassing. At that moment, I knew the camera system needed a change 
big time. The issue was that as soon as you approached the cameras, the game had to render up to six additional cameras at once, which obviously was not very good for performance. If I do say so myself. But now when you walk up to the cameras, instead of them all turning on at once and making your computer explode, you can cycle between each camera individually. Before, there was also a weird bug where you had to shine your flashlight directly on the screen to see it. But thanks to some random dude on Discord, the bug has been fixed. And now we can look at our camera screens in the dark. Big shout out to that guy. The new camera system still drops frames by about 10 to 30, which isn't perfect, but it's still a big improvement. If you've got a few seconds, I'd really appreciate if you could wishlist the game on Steam. It helps a lot with visibility. And if you're interested in playtesting this version of the game, join the Discord server. The link is in the description. Thank Thanks for watching, man. Let me see, I let think me see my your game's moonwalk cooked. real quick. Let me see your moonwalk. Damn, bro. What the hell? I even hit that turn. Where'd you learn that? Where'd you learn that? I'm gonna restart again. I learned it from watching uh, Sizek videos. Oh, that's, that's my guy. That's my guy.